got a good one today, Paul Thorne. Hey, Paul. Hey, what's going on, Roland? Doing well, man. How are you? How, how are you? I feel good. It's been a good day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, drove in from. Uh, well, we drove in last night and got a hotel. And uh, this morning, I just got up and uh, had a, a free breakfast at the hotel. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and then for lunch, I figured out that um, Bojangles. Fried rice ain't as good as Popeye's fried rice. Mm -hmm. I learned the hard way. So you got on the road and you research, man. That's I do how, my research. Yeah. Sometimes you write a song. And I, I, I'm real, it's easy to entertain me, you know, right. real easy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, you, you got a show tonight up in Asheville at the Great Eagle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then tomorrow night over in Johnson City, Tennessee at the Willow Tree. And then you're coming back around next weekend. You're going to be at the Don Gibson in Shelby. So you're going to be in the area a lot. Yeah. I like coming in this, this area. People are really nice, and uh, um, it's just a cool place. Yeah, it's so, cool. This is a ra cool radio station too. Yeah. When you you've been here before, but it's been a while. Right? Yeah, I saw something on the wall that I had forgotten about. I drew a I drew a CD cover for Crowd Around the Mic, Volume Eight. It's up on the wall. Oh, I did over that. There. that was I yours? see it. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I, I did that. Yeah, I hadn't seen that thing since I drew it. So How's it look? <laughs> it, it looks. Well, I, I, my stuff's better now, but I guess for the time, I thought it was okay. The, the multi-talented Paul Thorne. I put is, my heart in it anyway. There you go. Paul's got his guitar. He's got songs. Yeah. He's got drawings, all kinds of stuff. You want to play a song for us? Um, it's a beautiful song. Thank you, man. I wrote that many years ago. Uh, I met a girl. Uh, as I was actually opening up for Sting. I don't mean the name drop, but I was over in England opening up for Sting, and one of his backup singers had a tattoo of a, of a blue eye with a tear coming out of it, and she told me the story about how she got really drunk one night with a guy she just met, and they went to a tattoo parlor, and they got a tattoo based on his opening line, which was, if I could be a tear rolling down your cheek and die on your lips, my life would be complete. That's quite a line. It is. You can use that. All you single men <laughs> that's on Tinder and the things like that, you can send your picture and then put that quote in there with it, and you might get lucky. <laughs> so, so, so if, if scars are metaphors, there's a lot of songs about scars out there, I guess. There's all kinds of scars. There's emotional scars physical, and physical scars. But we all got scars. Mm -hmm. You live long enough, you're going to have a scar on your heart. Mm -hmm. I, I, I picture you as this guy like out there kind of wandering through the world gathering up songs. Does it work that way? It kind of does, yeah. Yeah, you... Uh, I, I always keep a piece of paper in my back pocket, and if I get a, a melody or idea or something, I'll, I'll hum it into my iPhone. But yeah, I, I, I get so many things just by listening to people. From you know, I can walk in a truck stop and hear somebody say something, and it just mm. it resonates with the whole world, and they don't even know it. Yeah. So I just write it down and I try to make something out of it. You know, yeah. It, it's kind of a cool way to, to work through life, isn't it? I think it is. If you're an artist, you need. Uh, the things to feed your art and give you new ideas for new things to write about. You know, that was yeah. something I was going to ask you. Cause you've been doing this for a while now. Is it, is it still good? It's still rewarding getting out on the road just night it, after night. Well, and, it's it's like any job. Uh, it's good. It, there's good and bad that comes with any job. And the, the good is getting to perform and, and and do those things like be on your radio show and just all kinds of things. The 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 only downside is the time I have to spend away from my family. Sure. You know, I have a wife and two daughters, and when I'm not there. They're not with me, and mm -hmm. that, that hurts. How that, old are your daughters? Uh, my daughters, one's married and lives in New Orleans. She's 26, and the other one's uh, 16. And uh, she's, you know, just going through the high school uh, boy thing. You know how it is. Yeah. 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 Hey, but I, I miss them. That's the, big, that's the big sacrifice I have to make. Did the family ever go on the road with you at all, or is that just? Well, they come to shows sometimes, mm -hmm. but. I would want them to go on the road with me because that's not that's not a vacation. That's work, man. Yeah. It's like a circus. We come into town, we set up, we do the show. Then after the show, we tear it down, go to the next city, and it's uh, it's a good life. But it's unless you live it, you don't even know you don't know what it's really like. Mm -hmm. You have to do it, you know. You've got a new record coming out. You're telling me. Yeah, I just uh, I just recorded a new record and uh, recorded it in in Memphis. At Tennessee at Sam Phillips Recording Studio mm -hmm. where Elvis recorded a lot of his stuff and uh, I did my last record there too which was a gospel record with mm -hmm. the Blind Boys of Alabama and we had a great time with that we toured all last year with the Blind Boys doing a show doing shows together but uh, that's in the past now and the new songs I have and, and you know I don't sing my new songs until the record comes out because in today's world if you sing a song somewhere and somebody puts it on their iPhone and then 
they put it on the internet, and then when your record comes out, people are saying, well, that's an old song, mm -hmm. and it hasn't even came out yet. So I hold them close till the record comes out. But, yeah, I got a new batch of songs that I feel good about. Is it staying with the gospel, or are you going? No, but gospel was just a one-time thing mm -hmm. I did. I, you know, I grew up singing in church. I mean, I put 14 albums out, but I, growing up singing in church, I always said I wanted to some point in my career do a gospel album just as a tribute to my raising mm -hmm. and to tip my hat to that genre. And I did that, and I got to do it with some of the best of all time, the Blind Boys, and uh, it's it's something I'm proud of, but it's in the past now. That, that, and that, now I'm going back to singing about uh, human beings and what happens in human beings' lives. That's that's what I do. Yeah. I have to say, though, that Don't Let the Devil Ride was the gospel record, the last one. It just sounded like another Paul Thorne record to me in a lot of ways. Well, you know, I appreciate even, you saying yeah. that. I appreciate you saying that. I, you know, if you can't, if you don't try to be yourself, who are you trying to be, you know? <laughs> and so I just always try to be myself, and that ain't going to be, that ain't going to make everybody happy. But if you make everybody happy, yeah. you got to, you, you must, you must be kind of a boring person. Yeah. If someone's know? not mad, you didn't do something yeah, right, right? Yeah. I, I just want to go back to writing. I want to go back to recording albums that my parents don't like. That's what. <laughs> that's when you know you did something good. That's if your parents like your record, it sucks. <laughs> All right, words of wisdom <laughs> from Paul Thor. Let's hear another song that your parents don't like. What this do you is a, uh, let me see. All right, let me see. Um, okay, I was uh, uh, watching the news the other day, and uh, a guy. You know how when you on the lo local news, it'll show a. Uh, a criminal being taken to the jail that they've been looking for in local news. Well, this dude had been raid, raiding uh, storage sheds and, and robbing them, and they caught him, and they were showing the film of him walking to the jail on TV, and he had on a Paul Thorne T-shirt. <laughs> so I want to dedicate this song to him today. Hope he's out, and if he gets out, I hope he quits stealing and try to become a better person. I was going to let folks know, tonight, Great Eagle in Asheville. Tomorrow night, the Willow Tree in Johnson City, Tennessee. And then next weekend, Don Gibson Theater over in Shelby. Um, I never thought about that. Most people don't have themselves on T-shirts. But, like, who wears your T-shirts, you know? <laughs> I, well, I know. Well, first of all, I don't wear my own T-shirts. And it's to, I it's. I see a lot of artists wearing their own T-shirts, and to me, that's just a little narcissistic. <laughs> You're not going there. You know, because huh? you see their face. Why do you need to see it again? You know what I mean? Two of them. Yeah. They're already that. ugly enough. And then they got two of them on the same thing you got to look at. <laughs> so, so, Paul, uh, that last song to me just it, it captures what you do so well, which is really funny, but yeah. it's also very human. And, and, and you know, at the same well, time. Well, it might have a few humorous lines in it, but... That song is about hitting rock bottom. Sure. You know, it's in the last verse, you know, the guys at the Glory Road recovery home smoking a cigarette under a dead oak tree trying to get his life back together. And uh, But that's the pictures I like to paint in my songs, mm -hmm. pictures of things that's really happening. You know? They're kind of people that, that we ignore. People on the fringes, yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. Uh, but I, I believe jewels are, the jewels are oftentimes jewels are in the gutter, man. You know, yeah. and we're all the same thing. Some of us got nicer clothes, make bigger salaries, uh, but we're all the same thing. You know, everybody suffers from the same uh, stuff. Everybody, you know, even the richest people in the world, they get frustrated and have miserable days, too. You know. Yeah. So we're talking with Paul Thorne again. Um Who's on your shirt? Is that Marvin Hagler on your shirt? That's Marvin Hagler. Dang on yeah. right. You remember, you know, as, as older I get, there's fewer and fewer right. people even know who that is. But he's an inspiration for me, uh, Marvin Hagler, because he was a, one of the greatest boxers of all time. And he had like 35 fights. He was undefeated. He was knocking everybody out. And he was fighting for $500 a fight because nobody that was up at the top would fight him. Because they knew he, they were scared of him, and so he he's he fought so long for pennies, and when he finally got a chance, and they finally, they just basically had to let him fight. He just cleaned house, and sometimes I feel like that, and I think sometimes we all feel like that. That maybe we've been overlooked. We all have, but Marvin Hagel is an inspiration for me because he was overlooked for a long time, but when he got his chance, he was ready, yeah. and I want to be like him. You know, I know I've had a good career, but we always want to go to another level, you know. So I want to spend my whole life just growing this thing. And I want to be like Marvin Hagler. And when the days ain't bad or not good, I want to continue to trip, trip, 
move forward like he did. So, so, so I hear two things in your answer that are interesting in your biography. One is that your father was a Pentecostal preacher, and I just hear that coming up in a lot of what you say. Yeah. And one was that you were a professional boxer. <laughs> I was a professional boxer, yeah. I, I was uh, at the height of my career. I was 29 in the world in my weight class. That's crazy. Yeah. So that means only 28 men could whoop me. You fought. If anyone out there who's a boxing fan, you fought Roberto Duran. Man. I did so, fight Roberto Duran. The hand, Fists of Stone, what was his name? The Hands of Stone? Han, Roberto uh, Duran, Hands of Stone, yeah. Uh, I beat a whole bunch of fighters and got made some wins and got in the rankings and earned this chance to fight him on television. And, and uh, I gave a good account of myself. Uh, but like in anything, there's a, good, there's a difference between being good at something and being great at something, you know, and – I was good, but I experienced going against great that mm -hmm. night. And what made him special was a lot of things. You know, everybody thinks he hits hard, and he does, but I know all kinds of guys that hit hard. But what made him special is he was incredibly hard to hit. His defense was like, I can't even explain it. It was like trying, it was like trying to hit a ghost, man. You, mm -hmm. could throw you, punch, you could throw them punches, but he could anticipate what you were fixing to do, and he would just slightly move his head, and he would make you miss. And, bef and you miss the punch, but before you could re recoil and bring your fist back, he's already over here <laughs> throwing a punch over your arm, arm that's already extended. And that he was a, in boxing, they call that counter-punching. Right. That's where you, they, they punch after you punch and in between your punches, and only the, only the greats can do that. And uh, he was one of them. And, uh, you know, in any sport, the great ones all have one thing in common. They can relax under pressure. Mm -hmm. That's such a, you know, I, you can get in shape. You can get in shape, be in better shape than your opponent. But if your opponent is relaxed and uh, comfortable in their own skin, they're going to win. Is it possible to draw a parallel between boxing and playing music, or is that just silly? Well, I think I've done better at singing because I have what I just described. When I, I don't feel nervous when I go on stage. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm in my element. I didn't have that when I was boxing. I was The main emotion I struggled with in the ring was fear. And mm -hmm. uh, any boxer, even Duran, every t I guarantee you, even though he was better than me, I guarantee you he felt fear when he went in the room in the ring with me because he didn't know who I was. He didn't know what I could do, what I couldn't do. And so um, I don't have to worry about fear when I'm doing this music thing. I don't feel fear. I feel like I'm comfortable and in my element. Uh, but in the boxing world, I didn't have that. Yeah. So I was good, but I just there was something in me that I just didn't quite believe in myself enough. And that's what you have to do to be able to get that relaxed feeling I'm talking about. You're, I read somewhere you're a skydiver, too. I did that, yeah. 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 I did that so I could conquer my fears I was gonna say, yeah. of heights. And uh, I did it 170 times, and I couldn't ever get on the, over the fear, so I just quit. Yeah, interesting. After 170 times, I was still scared every time I went out the door, so I said, this ain't for me. <laughs> well... You move on, live, move on, <laughs> get your lessons, 170. Yeah. Yeah. Paul Thorne's playing yeah. live today. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in checking out Paul, we are live streaming right now. You can check us out on our Facebook page. Yeah. See Paul with his Man, Mar Marvin Hagler shirt. I appreciate that y'all have me on the show. I really do. But what's what's happened, in, you know, when I was growing up, uh, like on TV, they had three channels. They had NBC, CBS, and the educational channel. And so that's what you watched. But now there's so much, so many different mediums you can watch and listen to that you could, you could do a podcast or, or whatever you want to do. And then your next challenge is making people know it even exists. Right. Because you're kind of like a needle in a haystack. You know what I mean? So, uh, so what I do when I have a video I want to put up, say I've written a new song and I want to play it, I'll just type in uh, – Paul Thorne in a porno movie. And then that way people will click on <laughs> it. You see what I'm hits. saying? Yeah. If yeah. you if you write, he's got a great song, nobody will look at it. Right. So here's Paul in a porno movie. Oh, let's, let's, let's go. Right. Let's watch this. And then they'll click on it. It's not a porno <laughs> movie, but some of them will stay. <laughs> got to do what you got to do. <laughs> working working the social media, Paul Thorne. Another yeah. song? All right. Yeah, let's see. Here we go. I knocked my, I knocked my guitar out of you. But that's real. All right, here's a song about uh, 
My mother's turnip greens. Yeah, yeah, that sounded good. <laughs> Paul Thorne singing about turnip greens. That's it. That's what my mama makes. She knows how to spice it just right. Yeah, man. So do you still live down in Mississippi? I live in Tupelo, Mississippi. Tupelo. All your life lived there. So. Pretty much. And um, it's the birthplace of Elvis Presley. Yeah. Mm. There's little odd parallels between you and Elvis, I guess. Yeah, we, a lot of, well, we actually went to a lot of the same churches. Yeah. Some of the actual churches that he attended are the same ones that I attended. Yeah. It's just a different generation. But yeah. that, that, that background of like gospel music. It's Everything I got musically, I give the most credit to going, growing up playing in church. I heard you, like when you were three years old, you were up there singing and playing the That's tambourine. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I was in the, uh, playing a tambourine and sing, singing songs like I Saw the Light and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, without that experience, I would have never became a musician because we got to go to the white churches where they had like a country western style gospel and at the black churches they had more rhythm and blues so i got to learn all that stuff the same from the same school of, that elvis learned from right mm -hmm. so uh coming up march 27th is a big day down there in mississippi because isn't that paul thorne day well <laughs> it is that's the strangest thing uh last year uh i got uh I got an award from the state uh, they, uh, for my contribution to the arts, and they declared March 27th Paul Thorne Day. So I got a day without having to be assassinated. <laughs> well, I'm happy about that, you know. What, what, what do you do to celebrate Paul Thorne Day? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. It's just a little something. That, it's not going to be like Martin Luther King Day. I don't think they're going to shut the school down uh, on yeah. my day. Let's just say that. I might get a little two-word thing in the newspaper. <laughs> it's pretty cool, though. It is cool. It is cool because, you know, got, I got a day, you know. And I <laughs> didn't know I was going to get that when I got fired at McDonald's, you know, <laughs> because I couldn't keep up on the grill. <laughs> so we are talking with Paul Thorne. Again, Great Eagle in Asheville tonight. Now, you're traveling with a band for your shows, is that right? Not this week. Not this no, week. These, but these next three week. shows are all acoustic shows. Okay, Great Eagle in Asheville tonight, Willow Tree in Johnson City yeah. tomorrow night, and then next weekend at Don Gibson Theater. Yeah. You have a band there? Yeah, the band's coming okay. back for That's... that. Yeah, yeah. I mostly do band gigs, but yeah. sometimes I'll do a little acoustic shows too, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was thinking we were going to see the, the Miss Caster guitar, but I guess. You, it, I'll have it at the Don Gibson Theater, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, the state uh, gave me this guitar state, shape, shaped like Mississippi, which turned out to be a really fine guitar built by a professional luthier. And I liked it so well, I started playing it. And so I've got this guitar shaped like Mississippi that I play. <laughs> so you can't make stage, this stuff up, right? <laughs> on stage every night. And when, I, when they first gave me the guitar, it was just a blank piece of wood. And I'm an artist, and they asked me to put something on the, the guitar. And so I drew a portrait of all my fans. It's, it's just people's faces all over. The guitar. And it's my fans, and it's what I see from the stage. And they wound up making 25 of them, and they're all they're all uh, signed and numbered by me. And uh, we we I think we they just came out, and we I think we've already sold like 10 of them. And we got uh, yeah, it's just, you know it's just something nice that happened in my life. And but you know I don't you can't let something like that go to your head. It's, it's like smell flattery, don't taste it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> Paul Thorne, he will have the miscaster next weekend. I will. Down in Shelby. And again, tonight, Great Eagle in Asheville, tomorrow over in Johnson City at the Willow Tree. Paul, can you do another song for us before Is we... this a song out? Yeah. What do you think? Well, I can. All right, that's Paul Thorne playing live today. It's funny, Paul, I had jotted down before I came in here, um, I guess in an interview, you said, one of the things that I take a lot of pride in is that I love everybody. I was a nice line. Well, I do. Yeah. I didn't say I liked everybody, <laughs> but I love them. Yeah. <laughs> Some people you have to love from afar. Uh -huh. <laughs> but if you got bad feelings towards somebody, it's just going to zap your energy, man. Spend your energy on something else, something worthwhile, like some uh, Popeye's Dirty Rice or <laughs> something. There we go. You got lunch and dinner <laughs> yeah. coming up. I got a half a container of, of Bojangles. Fried rice, if any of y'all wants the rest of it. <laughs> got volunteers in the room. Paul Thorne. I know these guys ain't getting paid, so if they want some free rice, I got you hooked up, man. But Paul Thorne is playing the Great Eagle tonight <laughs> up in Asheville, the Willow Tree in Johnson City, tomorrow night, Don Gibson Theater next weekend. New record's coming out when? It's coming out in July. July. I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I'm, 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 
I haven't put an album out of original material in six years. Oh. And so, uh, but the reason I didn't is I, I had songs, but I didn't have the, I wanted songs that I really believed in. And it took me a while to get them gr- gathered together. And I'm, I'm, I think I've, I've got that and I'm really happy about it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing it. So come on back again. I will. And thank y'all for years of support. And, and I want to wish y'all uh, lots of uh, success in the future, you know, because everybody's job is hanging by a thread. You know, everybody's. So I hope we all make it all the way. Sounds good. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Live broadcast on WCW are made possible by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company.